Welcome back to TTC. This is our seventh episode in our lighting test series. We built a sort of bargain bin light integration sphere, then sent samples to a lab that does this sort of thing professionally to calibrate our own with some encouraging results so far. On our last episode, we tested popular $20 to $30 pen lights, the sort of pocket light that you keep on your person for a quick flashy flash, which for us is usually an engine bay or under a car, but I'll admit we were sort of leading the witness a bit in that episode. Milwaukee's 2010R new pen light had not dropped yet, so we felt it was a bit premature to be testing maybe more professional options in the $50 range without including that new Milwaukee, and we didn't know quite which ones you'd want to see either at this price point. Well, both problems have been solved today because we do get to take a peek at and test the all new Milwaukee pen light, and as we can always depend on you guys vehemently advocating for your favorite version of lights, we foolishly forgot in each episode, we rounded up the top most mentioned brands and models from the last episode in the comments, purchased them to the sum of around 300 bucks for these tiny flashy boys to test their lumen output, lumens over time, and ultimately throw them onto the ground until they fail. I mean, sometimes we wonder how life has led us to these things, but you know, science. Anywho, we're going in order of advertised lumens today, which starts out with the LED Lenser P4R Core for $50. It advertises 200 lumens on high, the lowest today, but comes in the most substantial packaging. The P4R is like most lights today in that it has a separate 10850 size lithium ion battery, though this being the only one that charges exclusively outside of the light by plugging a micro USB into the battery itself, which has its pluses and minuses. If you have a spare one of these, I suppose you could have no downtime, though charging it requires opening the light each time versus the others today. It's 200 lumens has a very nice even spread, good for those close up stuff in our experience. In an engine bay, at least when fully charged, this light output feels pretty adequate, but not super bright. And well, since most of these lights lives are not going to be spent exclusively in your hands, let's face it, this one's length, weight, and aluminum body scores it a mouthfeel, yes, mouthfeel rating of seven out of 10. Pretty good all said. But let's see those 200 lumens. Are $50 lights fibbing as much as bargain bin ones? After the 30 seconds we wait per the ANSI F1 standard, the P4R is seeing once in high again, 185, 183, 181, just 183 lumens of the 200 advertised. Okay, not criminally overrated at all, but maybe off to a rocky start. Our next pen light on the day is that new Milwaukee 2010R we were waiting for. This one wasn't for sale yet for most retailers, so we did find a private seller who was willing to let it go for $65, and we snagged that up, but you should be able to find these for $50 even. This one advertises 250 lumens, and it's that signature Milwaukee True View color temperature which we've grown to like. It is a bit spot focused, maybe catered to construction where stuff is further away, and has an integrated micro USB in the body, which is the only location you'll be charging this thing as it does not open up. Milwaukee feels that if a battery can't be proprietarily designed and shaped for them, you shouldn't have access to it. Oh well. It does, however, have a cool red dot laser pointer button up front, which is sort of neat for pointing things out to your customer that yes, in fact, a water pump spewing out coolant all over the floor is something they should address now, even though they just came in for an oil change. And the tail end is a dense rubber material that should do well for its biting down mouthfeel score. In an engine bay, that spot focus does well to make use of those 250 lumens in a convincing way, though maybe washing a few things out despite that nicer light hue. And yes, this mouthfeel gets a 10 out of 10 from me. Can't imagine how you'd improve it without the material being softer and then maybe becoming spongy and soaking up oils and such. It's honestly just really comfortable in the old pie hole. But 250 lumens, Milwaukee has had a hit and miss reputation on this channel for those claims. So let's see it. So we're seeing 261, 263, 266, 264. Yeah, we'll call that 266, very nice. And low is about 50. Nice though, above its advertising, you love to see it. Our next pen light is a bit out of left field. I know we said $50 pen lights today, but you know us, we had to include an Amazon special, except this time we actually tried to pick something that might be good. A reasonable 300 lumen claim uses an Osram LED chip we've heard of, and quite good reviews, not that that often means anything on that website. This is the Cove Max, just $22, but advertises lumens right in there where you'd expect them to be, a 10850 cell like the others, and a 750 milliamp hour one at that, tied for the largest on the day. 
And well, yeah, super bright, a nice even spread, but yeah, maybe it's my eyes, but this one appears very bright in person. Its double O-ring seal on each end, though, is a bit cheaply made. The O-rings sort of smoosh out of position really easily, and it is micro USB rechargeable. It even has a twist focus. And an engine bay looks like plenty of light for this sort of thing for us. Mouthfeel gets a 6 out of 10, okay, but not great. It's a little longer, so that leverage is working against you, though it's not very heavy either. But this is a sort of no-name Amazon special, and that plus Lumen claims is a tumultuous relationship around these parts. Let's see those 300 Lumens. So waiting 30 seconds and 386? 386? Yeah, 385 lumens. Not only is that not the usual outcome for Amazon No Names flashlights on this channel, that's 22% over their 300 claim, which means that's a record for underrated flashlights on this channel. Damn, we know how to pick them. Our personal shopping services can be made available for a nominal fee from now on. Back in high, this light is even briefly hitting 400 lumens. That's just crazy. All right, time to circle back around to a brand that maybe did the best last time, Streamlight. We really liked their micro stream for just $30. And based on the comments, we tried taking the rear cap on and off of that one again, and ours got to be working again after its drop testing. So that ultimately matches the best from that episode in durability. This is the Stylus Pro USB for around $50. We paid $47. Advertises 350 lumens and is a sort of just a bit longer 10850 battery style version of that micro stream we tested. Lots of you guys wanted to see this one in the comments. And after how the last one did, us too. It's got a sort of spot focused, sort of not light output design, which is a nice balance between the two. Is micro USB rechargeable and battery removable like most of these? And inside an engine bay, it's more than capable from various distances as well. It gets a middle of the road 6 out of 10 mouthfeel, hard aluminum body, but not bad otherwise. It claimed 350 lumens and does appear pretty bright in person. Looks like it's seeing though 366, 365. Yeah, I saw a 365 there or 15 over for 4% up on their claim. Very nice. Low is about 90, 100, 110. Good stuff. Our next most powerful pen light was the most requested model and brand from our last episode, the Coast HP3R. Coast is known for being a higher value option among lights, but their pen light specifically is the most expensive on the day for us, being $57. With that, you do get an advertised 385 lumens, a nice twist focus, and some of the nicest spread of light we've seen in this class. The Milwaukee color temperature-wise is nice, but this one in particular is just super crisp and clean, in my opinion at least. The top button, aluminum housing though, a bit too proud compared to the button. My thumb's not abnormally large, but still hard to press down, sort of requires a more pointed effort. It takes USB-C, which we like to see, just more pleasant to use. And the build quality on this one is super nice. Everything is just buttery smooth, like the USB cover, the twist focus as well. And in engine bay, it does look bright. That uniform lighting makes more sense for how we use it. And that twist focus is there to hone in on smaller areas without bleeding over when you need to. The Coast also gets six out of 10 on the mouthfeel. Nothing remarkable, a little bit shorter, but also a bit heavier than some of the others. In the old integrating sphere, we'd like to see 385, so let's take a look. It's seeing 380, 376, 375, yeah, about 378, close enough to be spot on for our bargain bin sphere here. Nicely done. Last up and highest lumen rated is the Nebo. This is their latest pen light offering and had some monster specs for lights of the size, so we wanted to give it a go. This is their Inspector 500 Plus, a 500 lumen pen light just for around $40 to $45, we picked this one up for $40. It's metal power button at the top sort of jiggles around, but it does serve as a small magnet when needed, so that's kind of cool. This one has a few tricks up its sleeve. This shroud, when pulled down, offers a small area light, like a 360 degree mini flood. And while 250 lumens on high, you can hold down the button for turbo, which reaches as much as 500 lumens. I guess for signaling Batman or something. It's micro USB and its ends are a bit more bulbous than the rest of the field. Not that it can't fit in a pocket though. Obviously in an engine bay, this thing is bright enough. It's a little area light might prove useful for your application. Who knows, it's sort of cool either way. and You're not exactly paying extra for it. 
but it's 250 lumens on high, plenty workable for this sort of thing, and 500 lumens turbo, yeah, reaching flashlight levels and almost too bright when up close to things, given that it's a bit Spock focused as well. This one, however, gets our lowest mouthfeel score of three, as the clip is in the back, it's solid aluminum and a larger diameter bulbous back housing. Not very pleasant to use in the old tooth town. It's got some serious lumens to put up though, so let's see. So we're experiencing 487, 506, 500, 498, yeah, 500 lumens on turbo. And on high, where it's gonna live most of its life, it's seeing 245, 241, 240, 259. Yeah, for your eyes, that's gonna be a solid 250 as well. Pretty surprised, really. This has been the most honest class and group of lights we've ever tested. Though that's so far just lumens out the gate, performance over time is what separates the useful from the useless. Up first, we have the first three we tested in order lumens, the LED Lenser, Milwaukee, and Amazon Special. Both the Cove Max and Milwaukee fall out the gate, as flashlights tend to do, the Cove Max falling further from its super high 385. These three meet up around the hour mark, all making about the same here, 100 lumens or so, useful but not super bright. The LED Lenser takes a fall and conks out first around the hour and a half mark, followed by the Milwaukee, and the Cove Max holding on pretty good actually, though not very bright levels, and dies at 2 hours and 10 minutes. Now let's add the next three to see if those were good or poor performances. We'll have the Streamlight here, then the Coast, and then the Nebo. The Nebo is going to be tested in high, not turbo, as that's closest to match the others. All of these high lumen guys fall out of their high lumens within 10 minutes or so and settle down here, but the Nebo then just falling most sharply. The Streamlight holds on quite strong, but then also moves down to join the Nebo as well, just past the hour and a half mark. Milwaukee and Cove Max remain the standouts for a bit until they pass out, and Nebo is left to remain around 30 lumens much, much longer. Admittedly, this is not really how pen lights are used for longer periods, usually short bursts, but no real way to do short burst tests and show that comparison in a meaningful way. This does, however, give you an idea of how many total lumen minutes, let's say, you'll get from uh, each light, and how quickly they would turn into not super useful levels of light output. People often ask us to test these lights maybe in lower settings, but they basically become all lower setting lights very quickly. The LED lenser just not bringing a ton of area under the curve here for duration or lumen level. The Coast had the most dramatic tailspin down from where it was to lower lumen levels. Milwaukee bringing one of the most consistent outputs per the usual with their offerings. Streamlight had a pretty strong showing, though it joined the Nebo quicker than some others. Cove Max, a surprising, maybe borderline standout for just not being trash, and that's pretty good. Top two even maybe. Nebo, even despite starting out in high rather than turbo, had a very quick descent into not super useful territory. When we're talking charging, it's not super interesting here, as they are all similar, but LED Lenser takes the least amps and charges the slowest, and the Milwaukee the most amps and charges the fastest, followed by Coast and Nebo. We'll include all this data in the roundup chart in a bit. Now durability. Ah oh, yes, this is the type of light you're going to be dropping into everything, including plenty of liquids. When sprayed with the hose for five minutes, none of these seem to be caring too much. It's cool to see that light color temperature difference that we're showing here though. When we're talking about impact testing though, some differences become clear. The first handful of drops were pretty uneventful. Four, five, six, seven, eight feet, no issues. So already more stout than the budget group for the most part. At nine feet, the Amazon Special Cove Max takes her last hit, the first to go out. It's got thinner aluminum on the housing and lens shroud. I guess something has to give when you're talking about saving some money these days. At 10 feet, no news. 11 feet also. At 12 feet, the Nebo's off and she's not coming back on. Nebo's out, but we got four more. 13 feet. 14 feet. 15 feet and still nothing. So here's 20 feet. Finally, too much for one pen light, the Milwaukee. It still works, in fact, but its front lens cover shot out, and that's enough to be sidelining it here. So uh, yeah, these last three, the Coast, LED Lenser, and Streamlight, these are sons of bitches. Basically, had to resort to spiking these things on the ground with increasing amounts of anger. Let's see that.
and to no avail. These three deserve a Viking funeral if they ever kick the bucket. Well done to these guys. So here's where you can see all of the results. We got brand, image, model number, price, advertised lumens, and measured lumens. Only the LED lenser today came out under, and I mean, even that would be hard to notice when putting out a clean 200 versus this 180, 185. Impressive category, especially for Amazon not letting us down for once. Their runtime can be seen here. Their battery capacity is here. The LED lens are having the smallest battery, likely because of that micro USB slot they needed to make room for. That's a shame because it's also charging the slowest over here. Not super impressed with that design. And here we're going to be using Lumen Minutes, a common suggestion from the comment section and a good one. Average lumens might favor a light that dies quickly. Maybe it only lasts, let's say, two minutes, but makes 800 lumens in the first and 400 lumens in the second minute. That's a very high 600 average. So this is more like lumens per minute totaled. Boom, lumen minutes. How much light it can put out before dying. The Cove Max somehow takes this, that large battery helping, followed by the Streamlight, then Coast in Milwaukee nearly tying despite that Milwaukee starting out much lower, then the Nebo, and then the LED Lenser, again likely from that small capacity battery. Charge time here, the Milwaukee being short as usual, the LED Lenser being the longest, most of them being in the middle. And here we have durability out of 10. While the Cove Max was first to die, it lasted longer than the majority of our budget pen light testing. Mouthfeel is highly subjective and a bit silly, but also not a lot of variation on these lights either. The Milwaukee is best because they tried to be, and the Nebo is lowest because they needed a wider base for that magnetic use. But not great for the old cornhole. That leaves us with our picks. The Streamlight, again, getting our auto technician recommendation for just being all around good, never bad, plenty of light, and nearly indestructible. Remember to tighten that rear cap when the thing stops working. Though even for a tech, it would be hard not to also suggest the winner for features overall, the Milwaukee. You can tell they just tried a bit more at every corner. 10 out of 10 biting on the business end because they tried and added a rubber shroud to do so. Only light to charge faster than it drains because they tried. Has a laser pointer and is very durable. The permanent battery though, always a downtime and no quick swap battery action, which for auto tech favors that streamlight again. Then value, I mean, come on, Cove Max, what a guy, 22 bucks, basically half of most of these, you could buy two and have a backup. Crushed it here with over delivering on lumens, which helped it here to make the most lumen minutes. And this group, maybe not as durable, but still more durable than the average in our experience. Can't be mad at that. But when we're talking about that value, our last budget pen light episode had some standouts. Here's how the $18 Energizer and $30 MicroStream match up in black and orange on the graph. That microstream still just looking pretty good, even compared to its bigger brother if you want to save 20 bucks, and it's 8 out of 10 in mouthfeel for being shorter. Plenty to like from the offering today, not a ton of disappointments. The Coast looks and feels like a very good light and has a very pleasant light quality, but in this group just didn't stand out as much in the specs as some of the others, especially for $57. See our link below for the ones that made the cut into our storefront that only includes winners from these episodes. Click subscribe to join us for our next lighting episode and make those recommendations below for what we should be testing. Thanks as always for watching. Ooh.